What is all this? We have something similar or much more powerful than this. And because of that, they were submerged. They slay all of them. History went on to say the second time. In 16th century, another group came. Those are the ones that came through Baba Grief and Red Act. What I'm saying is, those ones came, they were killed, but the carry was not be killed. That is what came to Nigeria. And let me tell you, brethren, I remember my, my grandmother told me those days. He said what is called Anglican communion in our days that is like not so effective. He said when they came to my village, according to her, people were surrendering all their shams, all their idols, all their powers, they were surrendering them before the world. There is a power in the word of God. What am I talking about? These people brought the pure gospel and they crushed, they dismantled all that they met on ground. And that's why Christianity took root in Nigeria today. And I know more and more we shall continue to rise stronger and stronger in the name of Jesus. But what about in the north? Story says when they were about to invade the north, that the I want to call him the man in charge of that area said they already have their religion, and that is what brought the setback to today. That we, can, we cannot really capture the north now with all the strengths. Remember that at the time they said the. Uh, what do you call it? The Sultan said he was going to bring Christianity, I mean Islam religion from the north to the coast of Nigeria. I, I know many of us know that. Thank God that that cannot be possible. Christianity has been so strong that it has wiped out all the Ukons. Where are the Ukoni? Those of you used to know them before, that they were so powerful. People fear them. But where are they today? The gospel swept them up. The gospel ate them up. And their places cannot be found. I want to tell you if you know where they worship before. Many of them today, they have been deserted. I remember the way my village, anytime I pass around there, I would say, ah, this was our threat those days. But why? When the gospel came and people knew what to do, and they took hold of the word of God, and they began to smash with the sledgehammer in their hands. They dismantle all that is called Lucas. And that is why we are seeing like this today. Praise the Lord. Oh my God. I say praise the Lord. I don't know if somebody is still catching what I'm saying. I say praise the Lord. Why? They could not face the challenge of challenges that Christianity posed to them. When they were challenged, they lost their origin. They lost their group. And men were delivered out of their hands. Number two, that is the cause now. When you see your cause, it's supposed to be caught, please. Hallelujah. The cause are the worshiper or the worship of the superhumans and objects called gods. I would like to mention this much now because I'm going somewhere. You know, there are one religion today, like Hinduism, Buddhism, Christian, science. That's the religion brought by Mary Baker Eddy. You remember that? Like Baha'i faith, like Mormonism, and so on. All these religions are world religion. But I'm going somewhere, so I'm still coming back to them. They emerge as a result of superhumans or some things people worship. Whom they perceive to be God. Therefore, they worship them. Let me go straight to number C. The monotheism. What do I mean by that? I mean the religions that, for, that took their roots, their biological root from Abraham. There are three of them. We have Judaism, we have Islam, and we have Christianity. 
These three religious leaders, they took their biological origin in Abraham. And uh, but something funny, Jesus, when he was here on earth, and let's, let's check together, John chapter 8, John chapter 8, and verse 38. See what, John, what Jesus said. John 8, verse 38. John 8, 38. I speak that which I have seen with my father. And ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Can you notice that at all? I wanted to read to 54, but because of that, let's read verse 44 alone. Ye of your fathers, the devil. That's Jesus. Talking to the Jews. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the loss of your heart of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Can you see Jesus? They came from Abraham. But they will not do what Abraham did. If you read it more, then he said, they don't want to follow the steps of Abraham. But that notwithstanding, history trains their sources from Father Abraham. And uh, you have them like I've written them there. The steps of Abraham. In Judaism, it remained the religion of the Jews. The Torah is given to Moses by, by God. It remain their source of inspiration and they know the religion that I'm trying to mention at this time. This is the oldest among the three monotheist religion. It is believed to be over 4,000 years ago. Some believe that. Some say 3,500. There are many assumptions about that. Uh, but I don't want to bother you too much. The Jews wish to have the monopoly of God, and that is not possible. They want to say God is our God, and it cannot be God of any other person. They want to have the monopoly of the scriptures. That's the problem they have with Christianity. How can God go and get people like you and me into his kingdom? But that's a mystery of God. That's why God is different from others. That's why you cannot compare him. His mercies endure forever. You are a child of God today because God broke the power of monopoly. The Jews would have remained there and said nobody will worship God. But because he is magnanimous enough, he decided to go to the Jews, I mean to the Gentiles. He decided to go to all the ages and the streets and brought you and I. Remember the program of Jesus, I mean the illustration Jesus made. He said, a man made a feast. Thank you. He made a feast for his son. And he decided to send invitation cards to everybody. Come and die. Be part of my son's wedding. But on the day of the wedding, when everything was set, they sent for this man. They were giving different alibis, different excuses. They refused to come. And the man said to his servant, Go to the streets. Go to junctions. Wherever you see the lame, maybe they are one of the lame. Where you see the blind, where you see the cook, bring all of them here. Let the wedding house be filled. That's why you are a child of God today. I don't know whether somebody is getting what I'm saying. I thought somebody would raise his hand to Jesus and say, Thank you, Jesus. The Jews want to take monopoly of the scriptures. They don't want anybody to say, I know anything from the Bible. And two, they want to take monopoly of God and also eternity. But God broke it. And that is why Gentiles are permitted to be called people of God today. Hallelujah. I want to speak about this religion called Islam. 
And after I mention this, I'll give you some statistics. It's possible some of us will go back home and say something must happen. But let me just quickly mention this a few from this. Hallelujah. Islam is the youngest among the three religions, but they say it's the fastest growing religion. It has over one billion faithful worshippers across the globe. The globe. It is its roots to Ishmael, you know that. And the first, I mean the five pillars of their faith make it very, very difficult to be dismantled. Let me mention a few of those. I mean the five pillars. And please let's be very, very attentive to this. Number one. All of us who have been there before, or those who know about this religion, one of the things they do that keep the religion going is recitation. They hold on to Quran as their source of everything. And they recite. That's one of their pillars. They say recitation of the Shada. Uh, that means there is no other God but Allah. And Muhammad is his prophet. That's what these people hold on to as number one pillar. And that recitation, brethren. Let me quickly say this. Somebody said, if today the whole world decided to say the trouble of the world is religion, and they said, let all the religious books be brought together. Nobody must have it in their homes. Nobody should have it in the software. It should not be in the internet. And they gather on and bomb them. What do you think will become of Christianity? Somebody just imagine that. And when they ask one of these imams in this religion, if such happen, what will happen next? He said, it doesn't take us time. We will look for all our imam. We will look for all our people and gather them. It will not take us three months. We will bring out another new brand of Quran. Should that happen, what do you think will happen to the Bible? I'm still going to say something about that later. Number two. Five daily prescribed prayer. Every day it is expected of a religious Muslim to pray for how many times? Five times. And then if by anything you cannot take the first one or three or whatever, you must take the last one. Three. Arms giving. They call that one the Saka. All of us know what I say. Saka, yes. The prayer is called Salah. So, and four. That's one of the major weapons too. The 30 days fasting annually. These people will gather 30 days. In fact, when you have air, if you are a Muslim and you have air from the religion, they are going to discover you during fasting. I don't know whether you know what I'm talking about. Eh? I remember those days I had one sister in my church just gave her life to Christ. I was in choir state there. And this lady was so fervent, but she had a problem. She would only come on Sunday. And the moment service is over, she will run out. And one of the days I tried to accost her, I said, No, you can't go. What's the problem? Why are you not always staying back after service? I've been waiting to see you one of these days, and you've not been. Giving us the chance. She, she says, sir, it's like you don't know my story. I'm a Muslim. I'm just converted. I gave my life to Christ when I was in the college. And he said, when she got back home, whether she liked it or not, she must still pray in the Muslim way. But she had a sister who married a Christian around that church. So she would tell them every Sunday, I want to visit my sister. And she would dash into the church get a message, the moment the message is over, she's running back home. 
And I remember when it was the time of fasting, the father caught her. When they were fasting, he said, You must fast. Ah, the father threatened to kill her. And this lady, after months, I wasn't saying, yeah, One day, I just saw her. I said, What happened? He said, Sir, this is what is happening. Pray for me until I gain my admission. I cannot get out of this bondage. So if you have gone astray, you look for them doing fasting. I remember I was in uh, Dubai last year, maybe it was in August, and it was a time of fasting. It was so serious. You cannot eat or drink outside. If you are caught, you are going to pay an amount of money up to 200,000 in Naira. You must not. So everybody kept walking. You can't shoot, you can't just shoot your mouth. They will be arrested. It's as serious as that. May God deliver us. Number five, bringing me to Mecca. It's always at least once in a lifetime, according to their own belief. Brethren, that makes it a little bit hard. But this one thing I want to mention here quickly. Jihad is argued to be their sixth pillar of faith. Uh, I think I will return back to that later. It is an aggressive religion. Remember from Genesis chapter 16 verse 10, when God was speaking, was speaking to the mother of Ishmael. Can we quickly just see that Genesis chapter 16? Can we quickly see 16 Genesis? And um, verse 10, it says, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for what? For multitude. But let's see chapter 21 and verse 13. 21, 13. It says, And also, of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation, because he is what? Thy seed. It is thy seed. And uh, from there, it becomes difficult to dismantle this religion. Because God has made covenant. And it is not easy to break it. Hallelujah. Oh my God, I say hallelujah. I want you to note this. Every Muslim is not a terrorist. But every terrorist is a Muslim. Search it around. Those who have trouble, whether Asia, America, you remember what happened in June 12. Those that have troubled Australia, those troubling Africa, the troubler of the whole Europe, you know what I'm talking about. And the Lord must deliver us. In the name of Jesus. Oh my God. I say in the name of Jesus. I see say in the name of Jesus. You know about Christianity. All religions teach good moral. I mean moral and ethics. But salvation is by the accomplished work of Christ. All religions prescribe and describe ways to please God. But Jesus is the only way to God. If you believe that, can I hear your yes, please? I want to quickly give you the statistics of what is happening so we can think and rethink and see what we can do about what is called Christianity as grace is given to us. Let's look at it quickly. Somebody says, I mean, Martin Luther King Jr., it says, nothing in this world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Nothing in this world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. May we not be stupid. May we not sincerely ignore vital information that will lead us to our destiny. I'm still coming to conclude some things and I wish to talk to our fathers so they can help us out. 
religious. I want to compare just five quickly. It's not in the paper. I'm sorry. Um, I wanted to put it, but it was already there. So it's with me. I will read it, and in a way of analysis, you will get me better. Praise the Lord. Number one, Hinduism. That's the religion of India, and in worship of so many things. That's how they make it their own culture. That's the way they believe. They said that religion started is dated back to sixth century, sixth century BC. The total worshiper as at 2010. I got the statistics from United Nations. United Nations growth. I mean growth of world religions. That's where I got it. You can also get some of this statistic from Weekly and some other parts there if you need the statistic. And if you want it from me and you can get me your mail, I'll post it to you. So you can know that. And uh, this is not a matter of mouth. This is what is real on ground. For now, Hinduism is having 828 million people. People that are captivated under that religion strongly. And they grow. They grow at an annual rate of 1.6%. Every year they are growing. They are growing. Then, in the whole world, when they look at it, they discover that this world, I mean this religion, covers 14% of the total human beings on earth as at 2010. Because the world population as at 2010 is 6 million. Praise the Lord. What am I saying? 14% they are Hindus. Number two, Buddhism. I mentioned that that's the religion of meditation and it dated back to 563 BC as at, as at 2010 it has a total of 364 million people that cut across Europe, Asia and America and a few scanty part of uh, Africa and they grow by 1% every year they add 1% to their total population annually. Again, their population covers 6% of the total world. I mean, the world they have gained 6% to themselves. Three, Judaism. Judaism is dated to 1500 BC, according to another research. And uh, they have 14 million people today. And they grow by 9% annually. They cover a population percentage of 0.2% of the whole world. This religion, they believe they are stable. They are growth stable. Now, the other two I want, I want to mention. There are many I don't want to go into so many. I want to move, take five because of my time. Islam. Please, be attentive to this. It has 620, I mean, it's dated back to 622 AD. And the Bible, I mean, there is, the researcher says, this religion said, Jesus said, that he's going to send a comforter, and that the comforter is one man. I don't know if you have heard that before. Uh -huh. That's where the kids, I mean, holding that they believe the Bible, that Jesus even prophesied about it. I think you can understand what I'm saying. AD 622, they have 1.6 billion people now on the surface of the earth. 1.6 billion. And the unfortunate thing that pierced my heart when I was making this research is that they have six, they grow. Their annual growth is 6.4%. 6.4% annually. 6.4% annually. Their population, I mean world population percentage is 21.5%. And they say they are growing. The remark everywhere I look for on the internet is saying that is the only religion that is growing. The either said the rest is stable or the rest is dropping or declining. Christianity. 
representatives dated back to A, as they said, A, D, 30, some said, some said, too many things people said, but let's believe that when Jesus died, Christianity started. Let's agree. Then Christianity is having 2.8 I mean billion people. 2.18 billion people. And it grow, annual growth rate is only 1.4. Only 1.4 annually. And they said, for now, we have covered the world population percentage of 32.5%. And they said, it's dropping. They said, it's dropping. I would have given you other statistics like what Roman Catholic is 1 billion people now. That's out of the 2.1 that we have. Roman Catholic alone is 1.0 billion. Orthodox 217 million, Anglican 81 million, Protestants which we belong to, and there are 350 million, and um, others like Jehovah's Witness, like Christian Science, like all the rest put together, there are 537 million. Now, I'll just give you a data. Let me give you the analysis a little. Praise the Lord. That means every 12 people you meet, three are Christians and two are Muslim all over the world. I think that is still good. I'm coming. There is a projection that in the year 2025, the population of the world will become 8 billion people. They said then, every 16 people you meet, four will be Christians and five will be Muslims. Did you understand that at all? Why? Christianity is dropping. Let me quickly give you another statistics. Okay, before that, they say Muslims are making frantic efforts to Islamize the world. Is that not true? You see what is happening in Europe as we talk? Where they are selling churches. And these people have the money to buy. Let me quickly give you this. I want to give you Islam growth from 1989 to 2010. Please listen to this. In Europe, they increased by 142%. Even those nations that used to be Christians, they are no longer Christians indeed. In Britain, see Muslim planting mosques everywhere. Australia and Oceania, they have increased by 257% within the 30 years. They have invaded everywhere. Invaded Australia and Oceania. North America, it has increased by 25%. Asia has increased by 12.5% under 30 years. Africa, maybe because of the revival going on in Nigeria, they have only increased by 2.1. That's why Africa has more than any other place. But I'm still going to see what will shock you, brethren. In Latin America, they have increased by 4.7%. What are we trying to say, brethren? What are we trying to say? I don't know what will happen as the year goes by. That's why I fear the vision, the passion of our general overseer. Though it's not easy to sponsor foreign feeds, but brethren, what about if jihad happened in Nigeria today? What do you think will happen? They said the growth 
vote is due to birth rates because they have more children than Christians. That's one. Two, they are Libra. I was afraid when I got that information. They are very, very Libra. If you agree to join them, they will lavish money on you. Number three, the growth rate is due to jihad. They are ready to kill because of this religion. And brethren, I remember somebody, Kayamas, I got that from the internet. The guy was trying to comment. He said, one day, everybody has to be a Muslim. Once Muslims are more than 10% in any country, then it will be 100% one day. Nobody can resist what Islam preach or preaches. Meek and honey and 72 beautiful wives. He said it is irresistible. Is that not terrible, brethren? Somebody said, the day Islam will be majority on this planet, the earth will become a living hell. That's what another person says. I don't want to keep telling you what comments people are giving about this research. But I want to say, brethren, if we keep staying in our churches, relaxing, enjoying the AC and the fans, enjoying the serenity of peace that we have, especially in the Southwest, one day, I pray we are not invaded. I pray one day we will not lose it. I pray one day we will not cry. I pray one day something not expected will not happen to us. Brethren, if care is not taken, ah, may Christianity not be submerged. And why? Mm, let me quickly begin to run off. Because, because I'm checking the time. time. Praise the Lord. I go back to page 60. Is it page 61 or 62 now? 62. I don't want to talk too much about that part 3. You can read that for yourself, please. Let me go to part 4. Overcoming challenges of other faiths. Brethren, God has given us all we need. In Second Peter chapter one verse five, He said, "Who has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness?" And I want to mention a few of them things that God has given to us. One, the world. Nothing will be so effective like the word of God. I thought I could hear yes from somebody. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 28 and 29. 28 says, The prophet that has a vision, let him tell of the vision. He said, But the one that has my word, let him preach it faithfully. He said, What is sharp before the wheat? Now he went on in verse 29. Is my war not like fire? Is my war not like fire? Is it not like hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Brethren. We have not laid hold on this word of God. And the day we lay hold on the word of God, we can dismount to any religion. I don't think anybody is hearing it at all. If you believe that, can I hear your yes, please? The word of God. The word of God. Thank God for all my father that has spoken. The word of God. And in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. 
The word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharp. Can I say sharp? It's not you are not there. Say sharp. Huh. And when you say sharp, it means sharp. That's the way I see it. I believe when I speak the word of God, it must come out. And the reason is because God says sharp. It's not my words. The word of God is sharper than any two x sword. It pierces even to this dividing a son that of soul and spirit. Hey, brethren, you are carrying hammer in your hand and you have not used it. And the threat of religion has intimidated all of us. We are living in fear every day. Even those of us in Lagos. Recently they said, this people I don't want to mention that. They were in Lagos already, they want to bomb me. Everybody started panicking. Hey, hey, why? Thank God for the preacher yesterday. We achieved fair ground. The word of God is quick and powerful. Nothing would have made the gospel, gospel in Nigeria. If not that people came with the potency of the world and they dismantled. Brethren, it is still possible. Oh my God, I say it is still possible. Oh my God, I say it is still possible. It is sharp, sharper than any two-edged sword and pierce. But what are we supposed to do with the world? The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, I like that very well. Ezekiel chapter 3 from verse 1. The scripture began to tell us. God called Ezekiel. Take this road. That's the word of God. Take this road. And he took the road and he said, Eat it all. He said, Eat it. Oh, am I preaching out of concept? Let's see it. If you don't believe me, I see some of you just looking at me as if I am quoting from Quran. I'm not quoting Quran, I'm quoting the scripture. Can we just look at it together? Chapter 3, Ezekiel 3 from verse 1. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, if that thou findest, eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I, woke, so I opened my mouth and it caused me to eat the roll or that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy belly with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for what? Sweetness. Oh, if you don't believe that, let me back it up. Revelation chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10. Can we just please go there? Revelation chapter 10 from verse 8. The same thing happened to John. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is opened in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. Verse 9. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. Can you see that? Take it and do what? Eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be thy mouth sweet as what? Honey. Let's look at verse 10. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. See verse 11. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy. If you see in verse 4 of that chapter 3, Ezekiel, the same thing. Go and speak. Brethren, you have to eat it. Tell somebody, eat it. Oh my God, say, eat it. Eat the word of God. On, can you please tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, or tell her? Say, eat the word of God. When John had eaten and he was full, what happened? They carry him, throw him inside the hot oil, he will not die. They nail him to the cross.
cross, not possible. They want to cut him asunder, never possible. At the end of the day, what do they do? They carry him and they say, This is no longer a human being. And they throw him into the island of Babylon. I think you still remember that place. And the Bible says, Right there, instead of the animals to eat him up, brethren, the time has come that God wants to demonstrate the power in his world. I don't know whether somebody is getting it at all. Let's eat it. Thank God for all the preachers that preach, told us how to meditate, how to read, how to study. But now I'm introducing another level. You have to eat it. Memorize it. Until it sink into your heart. And make you strong. And make you bold like lion. And you can stand before your enemies. Brethren, there's nothing that terrifies the kingdom of darkness like your boldness. And you get your boldness from the word of God. If you believe that, can I hear your yes? The word of God. That's why number two, prayers. Jude verse 3 says, we should be ready to contend for the faith that is once given to the fathers. And my fear today is, may God forgive people like me and you. Because if it were like this, our fathers before contended for that faith, we will not meet Christianity now. They contended, be ready to contend for the faith that is once given. Why is he saying that? The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against what again? The spiritual wickedness in high places. And uh, thank God in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3. Hello? Hey, hello? People so, are just looking at me and saying, uh, is this the same Bible? Let's see it together, please. Let's see it together. 2 Corinthians. Though we walk in the flesh, what did he say we are not doing? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. They have the weapon of the flesh, but we have a greater weapon. Can somebody tell another person we have a greater weapon? What is he saying? For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Can somebody say mighty? It's mighty through God. That means when God is in it. Mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Strongholds. Pulling down strongholds. Every hold. Every barrier. We can bring them. I don't know whether you believe that with me. I say whether you believe that with me. One thing I believe in life is there's no problem that has no solution. The solution may not be now. It could take time. But there is a solution. Don't give up. Tell another person, say don't give up. Tell somebody beside say don't give up. You have the weapon of prayers. And let me tell you, our adversary know that. That we have the weapon of prayer and they are afraid. If we believers here, we gather today and we inject and invoke the scriptures. And we come up with the word of God. We can change our world. I don't know whether somebody is hearing me. Uh, we can change it. We can change it. And our enemies, our adversary, they know that. Let's agree and gather. I don't know whether some of us can still remember the little history when uh, Abasha was trying to bash the whole Nigeria. <sighs> you can still remember. I remember that time. Uh, many of us rose up. Is it not true? Those of us who know what, what I'm talking about. That the believers around Nigeria rose up and they said no. And when they prayed, what happened? Remember when the apostles, when the disciples prayed in chapter 4 of Acts of Apostles, in verse 31, they said the place did what? It shook. We are trying to avoid what we will soon confront. We are trying to avoid it. Somebody has the 
the weapon of the flesh and is using it to torment us. And all of us are trying to be quiet. Please let me begin to round off. Number three, boldness and faith. I think I mentioned that. The Bible says when they saw the boldness of who? Of Peter and John, they knew. They knew that they are being with who? With Christ. Because Christ was very bold. He was not timid. Uh, well, for some of us, when we see our fathers, we try to be shy because culture teaches us that we should be afraid of our leaders. But the truth is that when it comes to spiritual warfare, brethren, we can't be shy. It is our armor we must raise. And the fight. Because if we fail to fight, brethren, I don't know what will happen to the next generation. One day me and my wife were discussing. I said, it is like this with us now. What will happen to my children? This is my small, small children coming up. How will they face the challenge of religion tomorrow? Will they be able to stand? All these children were trying to give butter and bread. All these tomato and vegetable Christians were raising. Will they stand? Faith! Let's leave that. Let's leave that. Let's leave that. Number the last one signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. When God intervened, men know. Signs are attestation of God's presence. When God intervened in the matter, everybody knows. And we are praying that the Almighty God will arrive for us. I don't know if I'm hearing amen from you. Both in Nigeria, in Europe, in Australia, in Asia, in North and South America, the Lord will arrive for us. If people that are deciding our destiny, they happen to be of another religion, may we not remain in slavery forever. Signs. We need to show to these people that God is alive. I don't know whether you are hearing me. You heard what the man of God said yesterday, that when they were about to arrest him, and there was a miracle. What happened? He diffused the tension. Quickly, everybody around. Both the, the police, <laughs> everybody came for what I call. Brethren, Christianity is not a weak religion. Hello? It's a religion of power. It's a religion that God himself decided to release his power. And finally, let me tell you about that, that Christianity is not even a religion. It's a movement. Movement through God. And that's why we can break through anything. And we know that by the grace of God in Nigeria, enemies shall bow. In the name of Jesus. I don't want to go too much about that. Let's see another point there. We, have, we must be ready to live the life of a believer. We are the signs and the wonders the world is waiting to see. The Bible says we are the salt. We are also the what? The light. And I mentioned that when the light becomes dim, when it becomes dim, what happens? Darkness will start coming. But if we can reconnect, if we can recharge, if all of us can rise up in the arm of faith and we live the life of whom the Lord called us to live or be and live the life of the Bible, the world will be afraid of us. Lastly there, prepare the next generation. I mentioned that. Our fathers, I want to appeal to you. I want to make myself one of this small boy is coming up. Please teach us more. Weep us. Scold us. And at the same time, let's talk to our younger ones too that are much younger than me. Please prepare us. Don't look at us and say, all these boys. 
Don't look at us like that. Don't look at these young ones coming and saying, I will leave it too serious. Yes. I told somebody somewhere, you see those that are radical, they are the best instrument in the hand of God. Is it true? I say, is it true? The radicals. When they finally change, when they are transformed and they become children of God indeed, what happened? Hey, like Paul, they bring their radicality into the gospel. Hey, people that are timid, they don't go far. Hey, so please depend the next generation. Try to spot those who are radicals there and teach them. Commit it to their hands. They will do exploits. Finally, my conclusion. Martin Luther King Jr. says, in the end, please listen to this excerpt. He said, in the end, we will not, uh, we will remember not the words of our enemies. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Do I read it to you again? In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. What again? He said again, whatever your life, whatever your life's work is, do it well. A man should do his job so well that the living, the dead, and the unborn could do it no better. A man should do his job so well that the living, the dead, and the unborn could do it no better. And uh, that's in my book there uh, on that handout, Challenges are part of life. When you are tired of facing challenges, you are on your way to the grave. I want, I want to stop, stop like this. this. How, How many, many of us will say, God forbid that another dark age should come into Christianity. How many of us, especially you our fathers, how many of you will like it that what you have labored for all these great buildings, all these great structures we are building, if finally, it become a place where Muslims will worship. That has already happened in Europe. How many of us will say, God forbid, that our children should be submerged? by this violent set that are rising day in a, a new day in the house. See what is happening all over the world. Brethren, we need to cry. We need to pray. We need to wake up. This is the high time for us to wake up. If we fail to wake, well, our destiny is in the hand of God, but more in our own hands. We can determine it the way we want it to be. I think we can answer to pray. Can I say God forbid? I don't know if you are a spirit with me. Say that again. God forbid. We need to rise. And I want us to pray just one or two prayers. Why? I leave you. I'm sorry. It's like I'm taking more time. Please. Okay. Let's rise up to pray. Let us cry to God. And say, Lord, the faith which you have delivered to our hands will not lose the pattern. Faith, genuine faith, which 
our father caught the vision and they are laid it into our hands. We will not lose the battle. Let's cry to God and say, God, all opposition, all challenge and challenges rising here and there. Today we rise against them. Oh my God. I want you to use the word of God in your mouth. I want you to know that there's power in your mouth. I want you to know that nobody will do it for you and me. It is we who will do it. I say, Papa, today, every power containing the things that have been handed over to us, we destroy them. We dismantle them. Can you please open your mouth and cry to God, brethren? Let's cry to God. The word is in your mouth. The word is in your heart. The word is near thee. The word of faith which we preach. Please speak it out. No to the devil. Whatever be in this guys. No to the devil. Oh. I know you can do it better. This is an opportunity for us to pray. This is an opportunity for us to refuse this spiritual invasion. I say no, 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 devil, no, no. Kylie Shotari Kamoroko Shantamo. Jesus name we pray. Can we all please lift up our two hands and say God for me? Say God for me. Brethren, if our small small children just coming up, if they cannot stand tomorrow, who's what? Let's lift up our two hands and cry. And say we lift the banner of victory on behalf of all our children, especially the new generation coming up, they will not lose their battle. Raise your hand and pray in the name of Jesus. Raise your hand and pray. We lift our hands. We raise the banner of victory for all. Ah, let's cry. We lift the banner of victory. For the generation coming up. I know you are praying. Remember that God here and answer prayer. Remember God is waiting for the word of your mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, as we are praying this, I'm going to invite our Father in the Lord, the um, AGO training, and special duty to please come and pray for us. Let's raise up our voices the last time and cry. Everywhere the devil has invaded, through religion, all those places where they used to have churches before, but now they have swept them off. Let's pray today and say, God, let there be revival. Let there be revival in Nigeria. In fact, let there be revival in God's families. God can use you. If God see that passion in us, I know the, 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 the finance, the fund will not be difficult. He will provide. Let's raise up our two hands and cry to him again and say, Father, arise. 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 Let's open our mouths and talk to God in the name of Jesus.